Hi guys. Good evening. Can I get a good evening from you guys? Mm -hmm. Hello, good evening. Hey. So yeah. Okay guys. So we have our web webinar is for two days. That is Saturday, today and tomorrow. We'll be having half a half an hour. Uh, so yeah, so let me start with how do you prepare for your examination? So you have around probably 20 days, 20, roughly 20, 22 days you have. So first thing, if you haven't started studying, don't start right now because, uh, don't, I, I mean that don't start studying right now. That means your textbook do not touch it because you don't have time to finish your textbook. Rather, what you do is that you start practicing the revision kit questions. Okay. Start practicing what? Start practicing the revision kit question. So when you practice a revision kit question, let me give you a technique for how do you do it? So we have three types of section C questions. If you guys are aware that are what all first one we have as final accounts or single AD. Then we have a consolidation question and then we have a ratio analysis question, three types of section C question. So how do you approach this? So I would always tell all my students such when you're practicing revision, you do not practice the section C questions at a go. Because then you will get tired. You will not be able to do other questions. Rather split it. For example, morning, when you wake up, what do you do? You start with ratio analysis. So once you're done with that, then what do you do? You fill the gap by practicing MCQ question. Hmm? MCQ questions. Then in the afternoon, take your single entity question. After that, again, do the MCQ questions. And in the evening, you do your consolidation. And then after that, do your MCU questions till you stop for the day. So by doing this, what is the benefit is that you will complete, you will be practicing all the three types of MC, um, long form questions, huh? long form questions in a day, that is every day. And as well as you will be doing MCQ questions as well. So every day you are practicing the whole portion as such. So this is the strategy you have to do to pass. And also when you're doing questions, doing uh, the revision kit question doesn't mean that you just do it and skip. No, do your questions without looking at the answer. Then compare your answer with the answer key given and also read the examiner's comment. Very, very important. Because without comparison, you will never understand where you have gone wrong. So this is the strategy. Okay. Hope that's very clear to you guys. So now how today the webinar, I will be covering the consolidation. Okay. We have a secret sauce kind of stuff where I have summarized all the consolidation things in my uh, in, in a, in a word document. Okay. So if you learn this, then your consolidation is set. Okay. Both for balance sheet as well as PL. So today we will most probably complete the balance sheet and tomorrow we'll move on to the P and L. Okay. Fine. Okay, guys. So moving on, give me a moment. So let me share my screen. Okay, guys. So consolidated statement of financial position. I hope you guys can see my screen. Can you give me a yes if you can see my screen? Yes, I can see the screen. Okay, excellent. So how do you start the consolidated statement of financial position? You have to prepare five workings. First working. We will go in detail for each working. So first working is to establish the group structure. That is how much is a parent owning the company? Suppose uh, 
आई आई जे इज आई हैव बॉट ए सिक्सटी परसेंटेज वॉट इज माई ओनरशिप देयर इन ए इट इज सिक्सटी परसेंटेज सो दैट इज द फर्स्ट वर्किंग दैट इज एस्टैब्लिश द ग्रुप स्ट्रक्चर सेकेंड वर्किंग विच इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वर्किंग विच इज नेट असेट्स ऑफ सब्सिडरी नेट असेट्स ऑफ सब्सिडरी टेल मी वन थिंग गाइज वॉट डू यू मीन बाई नेट असेट्स net assets that means total assets minus total liability is net asset right that is total asset minus total liability so total asset minus total liability is in, in is is in turn what nothing but equity so we are trying to get the equity value of subsidiary in this in this working so we have to divide it between two dates that is at acquisition date at acquisition date or the date when we are purchasing or getting control over the entity and next one is at reporting date what do you mean by reporting date that is at the year end okay so two things then equity what will be the first item in equity definitely share capital share capital will be same for both acquisition date and reporting date where do you get this share capital from you will get it from the p and l uh, sorry the balance sheet of the subsidiary simple second one is share is share premium where do you get this from simple from the balance sheet of the subsidiary again it will be same for both the years then retained earnings definitely retained earnings also forms part of equity of the subsidiary ha huh? that also will be same no it will not be same why because at acquisition date there will be some profits hmm? and between acquisition date and reporting date there will be some profits coming in right that when added to this will give you the retained earnings at reporting date right so there will be some difference then what do you mean by fair value adjustment at the date of we purchasing subsidiary sometimes there might be we are saying the subsidiary would be saying this mobile cost or mobile as a fair value of 500 but i am saying no 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 you are wrong sir you are wrong this phone is not costing 500 but 600 so there is a fair value adjustment that means that is fair value adjustment and the value will be same for both acquisition date and reporting date then since my value has gone up i will have to charge excess depreciation right right so we have the excess depreciation comes into picture for for the fair value adjustment and depreciation is charged at the year end so it will only be there at the reporting date and not at the acquisition date and then we have internally generated intangible in subsidiary you would have learned ias 38 what does it state internally generated intangibles cannot be recognized in the financial statements why is that so it it, it is so due to the principles of uh, recognition of intangible what is the principle first principle it should be identifiable that means th there should be a the the intangible and the business should be separable that means intangible should be sold can be sold or bought separately from the business second condition it should arise out of legal or contractual rights when does it arise when we are purchasing it ha huh? so this is not the case in internally generated it doesn't arise due to legal or contractual we are not purchasing it right also it should meet the definition of assets what about the definition of asset cost should be reliably measured probable that benefits flow to the entity yes benefit might flow to entity but we cannot recognize a cost here why because it's internally generated because there is no cash outflow happening right it is internally generated so in individual financial statements we do not recognize the internally generated intangible however logically when we are buying the subsidiary when we are buying the subsidiary we are internally buying the internally generated intangible as well 
now there is a cost coming in the internally generated intangible so we can recognize this internally generated intangible in the consolidated financial statement in the consolidated financial statement that is the logic behind this so definitely we have to recognize internally generated intangible definitely it will be same for the acquisition date and the reporting date definitely intangible is coming in now we have to bring in amortization for this so this is for the adjustment for that that is amortization on internally generated intangible and that is deducted at the reporting date because amortization is at the year end next we have unrealized profit on inventory we need to adjust again what do you mean by unrealized profit on inventory suppose subsidiary only if the subsidiary is a seller that is subsidiary or parent both can sell to each other right suppose subsidiary is selling it to the parent at a profit that profit is unrealized if that inventory is still remaining in the books of the account that is books of the parent that is it is unsold suppose if it is sold that means that profit is realized now so there that is there is no unrealized profit coming so unrealized profit comes when there is a inventory who is selling so unrealized profit needs to be uh, adjusted in working note number 2 if if subsidiary is a seller first point second it should be adjust, adjusted if this inventory is still remaining unsold at the year end in the parents warehouse or whatever it is because what is the logic the inventory is not sold that means the profit is unrealized so that also we have to adjust at the reporting date so when you adjust all this we will get a total for at acquisition date and reporting date and the difference of this acquisition date and reporting date will give you the post acquisition profits post acquisition profits okay and whatever i have told here i have summarized it over here okay let's read through see share capital and share premium both for acquisition reporting date will be same in generally generated intangibles are not recognized in the individual financial statement as per ias 38 however when we prepare consolidated fs we have to record internally generated intangible as we show it in working note number 2 calculation and also in consolidated sofp sof means statement of financial position as a non current asset if there is a fair value adjustment for internally generated intangible being recognized at acquisition it will be same for yes i told it will be same for both acquisition and reporting date however excess depreciation and amortization on the fair value adjustment and internally generated intangible respectively will be there only in the reporting date that also we discussed see next is unrealized profit unrealized profit needs to be eliminated from retained earnings of the subsidiary that is why working note two we are adjusting when do we do it if the subsidiary is the seller if the subsidiary sells to the parent and the goods are still remaining in the parents warehouse that is unsold also it needs to be deducted from group inventory in the consolidated sofp everything what is coming here i have summarized it clear cut guys okay fine understood any doubts on this do you want to ask any doubts on the working note number 2 any doubts guys if if yes if if there is no please give me a no yes or no guys are you guys there yes or no okay excellent okay so with that we have completed the working note number 2 a very important calculation for consolidated financial statements moving on working note number 3 which is goodwill what goodwill is this this is the goodwill that arises on the purchase of the subsidiary on the purchase of the subsidiary how do you calculate it that also there is a logic which i will explain it to you 
I don't think anyone will explain the logic because whatever, if you have gone through my classes or if you have gone through my recordings, you will understand that I don't teach a single entry or single thing as to, I'll, I'll tell you to buy hearted. I, there is always a logic for everything. If you have gone through my recordings, you will understand that. Okay. So goodwill working note number three, goodwill. Okay. How do you get goodwill? I told you, huh? It is a goodwill arises when we purchase and purchase and purchase a subsidiary. Okay. How much we are paying? Suppose I am paying for the subsidiary hundred rupees and I am getting, huh? I am getting an assets. I am getting assets worth only 80 rupees. Then you would say, sir, why would I uh, give 100 rupees for 80 rupees of assets. That is the goodwill. The 20 rupees or the excess amount you are paying above the assets is the goodwill. So how do you calculate? Simple calculation. Fair value of purchase consideration paid or investment at fair value. So how much I have paid to get the subsidiary, right? That is the 100, right? Also, this in, in the question, this will not be straightforward as cash. There might be other consideration as well. That also we have to add first one, which is add fair value of deferred consideration. What do you mean by deferred consideration? Let me tell you. I am telling Mr. A, sir, I will give you 10 rupees today. But rest of the 90 rupees, I will give you after three years. That is Defer, defer to the future, right? That is deferred consideration. So what do I have to do? I have to record 10 over here and the 90 I have to record in deferred consideration. Anyways, but when you're recognizing 90, we have to account for the time value of money because why I will only get the 90 rupees after three years. So I have to discount it. That is why I'm saying fair value of deferred consideration, if any. Then we have to add fair value of contingent consideration. What do you mean by contingent consideration? Let me explain it to you. Suppose I am saying, Mr. A, right now I will give you 10 rupees. But after three years, if the subsidiary's profit is reaching 1,000, then I will give you 90 more. Otherwise, I will not give you the 90. So that 90 rupees is contingent. That is depending upon a certain criteria or situation. That is contingent consideration. That also we need to account it. Again, we have to discount it at present value. Okay. Now, so now I will say I can just deduct. So now you will say, sir, now we got all the consideration we have paid. Now I just need to detect what the 80, that is the asset value. I would say no. Why? Because I am only purchasing 60% of the company. However, if how can I detect the 80 rupees? Because 80 rupees relates to the 100% of the company. So that is not a fair deduction, right? So what I have to do? I have to make this 60% to 100%. How do I do that? That is the non-controlling interest or the interest which I have not purchased. That also I have to add so that it becomes 100%. And now I can deduct the 80 rupees. That is because 80 rupees is the 100% of the assets, right? So next step is to add the fair value of NCI, which is called non-controlling interest. What do you mean by non-controlling interest is that the amount of equity or amount of percentage, suppose 40%, which I am not owning, that is called non-controlling interest at acquisition date. Okay. Then what do we do? We detect the fair value of net assets of subsidiary at acquisition. Where do I get this? From working note number two, which is this value. Okay, the total value at acquisition date. When I deduct it, what do I get? I will get goodwill at 
acquisition date. Then what do I do? Definitely goodwill will be impaired at a point of time. If we have to direct, if there is an impairment, we direct that and then we get goodwill at reporting date. Okay. I hope that makes sense for you. Okay. Next, let me tell you. So we have quickly understood what is NCI. Now we can calculate NCI using two methods. What are the two methods of calculation of NCI? First method is fair value method. What does fair value method state? Uh, I can calculate NCI at, at the number of shares NCI own. So we have two methods, which is fair value method and net asset proportion of net assets method. Fair, fair value method, how do you calculate the uh, NCI is the number of shares the NCI holds into the market price of the subsidiary. Market price of the share of the subsidiary. We will get the fair value. We will get the NCI at using the fair value method. However, proportion of net assets method, how do you calculate NCI? We will take NCI percentage into fair value of net assets as accuracy. That is NCI percentage, that is if it's 40 percent and I will take this total and multiply it with 40 percent, which is NCI percentage into the subsidiaries net asset at acquisition. Okay. That is how you calculate. However, when I am calculating NCI at fair value, the goodwill I am calculating here is the group's goodwill. That means both parent and subsidies or uh, both parent and NCI's share is involved in this goodwill. However, the, um, the NCI I am calculating using proportion of net assets method. So the goodwill calculating using that method is the goodwill for the parent only. So what will happen? Fair value method. The goodwill is calculated for the whole group. So the impairment is also related to what? Impairment is also related to the whole group. So this impairment needs to be split between the parent and the NCI. Okay. However, if it's proportion of net assets method, the goodwill is only related to the only relating to whom? Only to the parent. So the impairment will also be only relating to the parent. Simple. Right? Very simple. Okay. Fine. Okay. So moving on. If goodwill is positive, treat is treated as a non-current asset on the financial statements. Definitely. Uh, goodwill is an intangible asset. We need to show it in finance. So the 20 rupees will be shown in the financial statements as a non-current asset. However, if goodwill is negative, what do you mean by negative? Let me tell you. Suppose I am paying 100 rupees for the subsidiary, but I am getting 120 rupees of assets from it. Oh, great. So there is no goodwill here because why I am paying less for the assets. Here, there is a bargain purchase. I am purchasing it as a bargain. So there is no goodwill. So if goodwill is negative, the acquisition is regarded as a bargain purchase. And the gain is included within retained earnings in working note number 5. Working note number 5 we will discuss later. And in consult SOPL as a single line item. And also no goodwill is recorded in the consolidated SO. FP. Hope that makes sense for you. Okay. The contingent and deferred consideration needs to be recorded present value with an annual finance charge charge to P&L and group retained earnings in working note 5 and an increase in deferred liability. Definitely since we are recording it at present value every year we have to charge a finance cost and increase the deferred liability. Right? Deferred consideration. Like, like what we did in uh, what do you say? The, the provision for decommissioning, right? Remember the provision for decommissioning? If you guys have gone through my lectures, you would have remembered it. Okay, fine. In individual financial statement, in individual financial statement, do not record condition consideration in FS. However, the condition consideration needs to be represented in the consolidated FS as a liability. Yes, in individual financial statements, we do not recognize condition consideration. It will contingent liability, contingent assets will only be disclosed in the notes to financial statements. 
however it will not be recognized in the individual financial statements however contingent consideration needs to be presented in the consoled as a fp as a liability if parent issues if parent issues shares as purchase consideration the fair value of the shares given at acquisition date needs to be calculated to per to the purchase and also needs to be issued shares to be included in the parent equity in the consolidated sofp okay so goodwill calculating use calculated using the fair value method is the total goodwill attributable to the group while the goodwill calculated using the net assets method is the goodwill attributable to the parent only which i told you so if it's for the group the impairment is also for the group so we have to split the impair impairment to parent as well as nci however if it is calculated using net assets method it is calculated only for the parent so the impairment also is relating to only the parent so let's stop the webinar today till here rest we will continue tomorrow do you have any doubts still what i have explained now guys any doubts no doubts excellent okay so see you guys tomorrow at the same time until then see you have a good night yeah any doubts can i get a no sir ha huh? okay thank you no problem okay guys so see you guys tomorrow bye bye yeah you too makanalo i'm sorry if i am pronouncing your name wrong okay so <laughs> makanalo <laughs> makanalo okay great i'll i'll, I'll, I'll keep that in mind makanalo yes my name is very simple jerry joseph anyone any yes, tom dick and harry <laughs> can pronounce it jerry, right it's simple it's simple and come on <laughs> Okay. Thank you so much, See you guys. guys. No problem. Bye. No problem. See you guys. Study well. Study hard. We have very less time. Okay. So see you guys. Bye bye. bye.